com- the guy's comic book in question. I want to go through it real quick. Um, he's got a, his F China theme going on. Okay. Uh, he doesn't like Christians. He's got a suppressor on a Liberty device, but it makes noise anyway. He's got a white gang member struggle snuggling a brown girl. Then another white gang member going around um, thinning out the herd. Uh, and then we have this uh, half dozen gangs begging for their life, being yeeted by one guy who comes to save the day, who's this gentleman right here, because why not? Uh, good, you're awake, you're alive. Now, I'm no grammar Nazi, but... Oh, and real quick, I want to say I got to read MAGA 7, and it was funny. I'm always surprised by how witty Mike is in writing, because in person he's kind of dry, but on paper he is as funny as Cecil. So Peter Samiti has been getting some flack from people of soy on Twitter. This guy decides to loudly virtue signal his complete and utter disdain for Alterna, because Peter will sit down and talk to people. The crux of their argument is that DNC was critic diversity in comics from a couple of years ago was criticizing comics by protected categories, Gale, Kwanzaa, Mags, whatever. But their argument is never honest. DNC criticized developmentally disabled books written by cigarettes. The books weren't bad because they're written by a woman or Irish or Italian. They had plot holes and character development problems. The creator attacked DNC. He gave them some crap back. It wasn't a big deal and it was mutual. So uh, I've got a question for this guy. Are we allowed to criticize everyone equally? Should our criticism of a Russian be different from a Greek? What are the rules? Because somehow I suspect that they will change depending on their politics. Because if you're a black Republican, you're pretty much dead to them. And how come nobody on their side of the aisle won't raise their head and say, Hey, you know, Peter can talk to anyone he wants to. If you're claiming that these guys are monsters and Peter is one just by merely associating with them, we're going to need to see some evidence that the whole group is evil. Just because some of them got into some fights with people. And, you know, fights are mutual. I remember most of these fights. It was very much a two-way street between adults. Well, that's not quite true, because some of the SGW comic pros were attacking uh, Myers' children and spouse, because these people are crazy. And no one on their side of the aisle raised a hand and said, Ah, yeah, you know, their families are off-limits. Don't talk about somebody's kid. And uh, don't send pictures of your anus to uh, anyone. Ever. (laughs) Ever. This guy, Robbie Rodriguez, sexually harassed uh, Ethan. And, uh, I mean, did Ethan indicate that he wanted a picture of someone's anus? I don't know the history between them. If there's any flirting going on or if that was an offering, I'm just going to go out on a limb and suspect... (laughs) He did not <laughs> want to see that. God, how horrible opening up your email or your Twitter and seeing a picture of somebody presenting themselves. A male. A hairy, hairy male. Basically saying, come hither and mount this, big boy. But nobody on their side of the aisle speaks up. And Eric Esquivel, who wrote the Border Town magazine... Turns out he was a degenerate also. Even Mark Wade has got some accusations against him. And a lot of these other guys have got accusations against him. And they're all mainstream comic guys. And they're all pretty shady characters. And it's been going on for decades. And it's uh, everyone has just been kind of silent about it. Kind of strange. And uh, they keep... Uh, they, uh, they keep repeating this line about that women and trans people can't be criticized. You know, they're not made of cocaine. They're not going to melt. They never mentioned that these purse puppies tried to destroy some of the guys on our side of the aisle. Several, several of them actually threatened violence. So this guy, Terry Mayo, gets his dopamine hits by saying he's not going to have Alterna publish his comic. Why burn bridges over absolutely nothing? He he made about 10 comics, did with Alterna. He had two left to go in the series. If you're not having them publish your comic, you're basically saying that you're retiring from comics. Fine, sell it on Amazon. But you don't need to loudly throw Alterna and Peter Semini under the bus. It makes you look unprofessional and vindictive. Most people don't care about your politics, but they want to know that you're not going to stab them in the back. Oh, you can check uh, the Wicked Righteous 
on um, Comicron. It is selling. I think the last one sold seven hundred. 700 and a buck 50 a pop so good going there thanks to everybody oh threat alert because all 7,000 of his followers are i'm sure just waiting with bated breath supported the wicked wicked righteousness on alternum i tried to keep it classy respect the wicked all oh, takes place during a global pandemic and in light of everything going on with covid i've been against promoting creating or releasing it why don't people need a little break during the Wu flu. I don't want to release it because it just feels completely wrong to do that right now. So until the world heals, my 700 issue per month comic is on hiatus. I'm sure all 700 people will be just devastated that they can't buy your dollar fifty comic. I'll turn a publisher. Peter Samiti is my friend. Uh, if he was your friend, you'd probably do this privately. He has a huge heart and is part of my comic family. Just like any friend, I'm going to F him in the A. We don't always agree, because he doesn't like getting F'd in the A. And recent choices have prompted me to change our relationship. No hate, but here's some hate. I decided to officially leave Alternative Comics. You had two more comics left, so you, they were probably going to sell 1500 total at a dollar fifty a pop. So... I have a thin tolerance for the culture of mistreatment, predatory behavior, except you didn't speak out uh, when people in your industry were struggle snuggling women at conventions or sexually harassing people. You kind of remain silent on this. Uh, he says he doesn't block people on his Twitter, so if you want to go to his Twitter, I don't mean to, don't harass him or anything, but, you know, have uh, frank discussions with him about this. And above all, hate from any creator, any publisher. Any fan, anyone. Really? You really you really believe in the open marketplace of ideas? Is that what you're saying? Cause let me ask a question. Who gets to who gets to determine what hate is? Who gets to determine what hate speech is? Who do you grant the godly power of censorship to? Who's the best person to decide what words you may utter? Because uh, if you believe in censorship, then you're saying you don't believe in the open marketplace of ideas, which kind of means you just believe in slavery. Because otherwise, who's making the call if it's not you? Uh, I'm optimistic, but not naive. So I know that this post may bother some. Yeah, all 700 of your fans. That's not my intention. I just felt I owe it to myself and to the one or two fans. 700 of my work to be clear about who I am and what my expectations are for those who choose to spend time in my world. 700 people. Thanks again to the readers and creators who've been so gracious over the years. I know more of you by name. Why are don't you just spell out you? And you think I appreciate it all more than you. In fact, why are you capitalizing words randomly and, and uh, capitalizing entire words and the first leading words? It, it, you're a writer. You write very strangely. I'll step down from the soapbox and end awkwardly now. Take care. Be good. More importantly, do good. Don't do this. If he's your friend, then you can talk to him privately. You don't need to do this kind of nonsense. Huh? Oh. Um, I don't know what to tell people like this. Um, if they think there's guilt by association or somebody said something they disagree with and they need to be canceled, I say, well, you know what? Um, you, have a, you have a platform. You can say your piece. They can say their piece and let the customer decide. No, 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 no. We need to call the publisher and make sure they don't sell this material. You need, you need to involve yourself in someone else's business? You're saying you want to take the choice away from some, from an adult deciding to buy or not buy a comic book because you know better than them. How is that not slavery? How, I mean, what, what kind of hubris do you have to have to think that you can make the decision for an adult on what they should or shouldn't buy? All right, so this guy's not publishing with Alterna. I'm sure you can get another publisher, you can go to Amazon, or you can sell them independently, or whatever, but you weren't, like, I guess the Alterna business relationship, you're not working for them. They're not, I guess they're actually more likely working for, for you. You've probably got some piecemeal um, contract. There's no expectation of future work. It's just, all right, you do a comic book, they'll publish it for you, and they'll distribute it to the comic book stores, and the guy's just clicks off how many people want to buy the book it's not you're not breaking a contract you're not you, you're not severing a relationship you had 10 books with alterna you're going to take them elsewhere and i'm sure people are just beating down the door i mean that's kind of petty of me uh but i read the book it's uh 
It's just the same stuff I read in all these woke, those woke comics. It's just the exact same stuff. White gang members. Every single time. It's a blonde guy or a, a red-haired guy. Or, they've, or they're all shaved heads and they've got leather jackets. It's like, doesn't anyone read this and go, this is f- fucking ridiculous. Why are you like this? This is so... It invites a response of people to look up and say, you know gang members aren't white. And then that's like the uncomfortable silence in the room, the, the record scratch, and they go, what are you saying? Oh, my God. I'm saying we're not... We're not developmentally dis, disabled. This is, this is nonsense to, to have these... To have something so obvious, a, a shaved-haired guy in a leather jacket, and his whole crew gets killed by a, a black guy. Look in the mirror, man. What is what is wrong with you, Terry Mayo? Terry Mayo. Terry Mayo wears a mask because his government told him to wear a mask. Wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. I mean, obviously, the mask thing is political. Oh, gee, 100,000 people have got COVID. What's the fatality rate? Oh. Well, one 80-year-old woman died. Well, did she die of COVID or did she die with COVID? Uh, See, they think the riots and they think wearing masks, they think this all hurts Trump. I don't see it how it does. Wuhan, China. Um... Chinese originated viral respiratory infectious disease from Wuhan, China. It doesn't hurt Trump. You want to burn down Oregon and Washington and Minneapolis, those are blue areas with blue leaders. That doesn't hurt Trump either. Burn down Seattle and Portland all you want. I don't care. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, guys. I'll see you on the next episode.